Unless you've actively been ignoring all sources of tech news this past week, you're probably aware that Nvidia has finally released its first Ampere-powered GeForce. To say that the 3080's launch was eventful would be an understatement. While we found ourselves blown away with the performance offered by the new card, those who tried to buy one at launch found themselves not so impressed. It seems likely that the RTX 3080 is going to remain elusive for a while, so those who are desperate to buy one will have to get used to refreshing the same set of browser tabs throughout the day. Unfortunately, we don't really expect that the availability of the new RTX 3090 is going to fare any better, so be prepared to exercise some patience. On the topic of the 3090, we're going to be taking a look at the new Founders Edition version of the card for this video, with a heavy focus on creator workloads that revolve around Nvidia's CUDA and Optics APIs. Once the RTX 3070 drops, we'll post another video that has a more well-rounded look at performance in software like Premiere Pro, Vegas Pro, DaVinci Resolve, and Spec ViewPerf. We think it'd be fair to call the 3090 Founders Edition a beast, not only because it will prove to be the fastest creator GPU on the market, but also because it will take up three entire slots in your PC. The RTX 3080 itself was a bit larger than the largest last-gen GeForces, but the RTX 3090 almost feels like it is the computer. Okay, maybe it's not that bad, but you'll definitely need a roomy chassis to make sure you don't run into clearance issues. Like the RTX 3080, the 3090 Founders Edition sports a new 12-pin power connector, found at the top middle of the card. The positioning of this connector is not what we'd call ideal, since it'd be impossible to avoid a cable hanging in front of the GPU once it's installed. On the upside, the card still looks really good, and that huge cooler will help deliver peak performance without running the risk of overheating. While Nvidia doesn't always invite Titan into its GeForce discussions, the company directly pits the RTX 3090 against the Titan in its own comparative examples, which is interesting for a few reasons. For one, Titan bundles extra workstation optimizations, like improved viewport performance in certain CAD suites, while this 3090 doesn't. We're not sure if this means Titan is done as a series, but we suspect not. The reason for Nvidia's direct comparison is because the Titan RTX was the top offering of that generation, and it also bundled in a 24GB frame buffer. If you're not sure if you could benefit from so much memory on your GPU, the answer is probably no. With its huge frame buffer, the RTX 3090 targets those with the heaviest possible workloads, including gaming that goes beyond 4K. It's probably no surprise that Nvidia has talked at length about the creator aspect of its RTX 3090. In Octane Render, really large projects will be able to load entirely into GPU memory, whereas GPUs with a limited frame buffer will need to use out-of-core mode to access system memory, something that imposes a severe performance penalty. What you're looking at here is an Octane Render model that was provided to us by Nvidia which happens to require more memory than a GPU like the RTX 3080 can provide. In this case, the memory hit 14GB used, and the render took about 36 seconds to complete. With the 3080, that render time bloats to about 10 times as long, simply because out-of-core mode is required for the entire project to load across GPU and system memory. We've been hearing about AK video editing for a few years now, and it's a workload that could benefit not just from a healthy supply of memory, but also the PCIe 4 bus. When AMD launched its 5700 series GPUs last summer, it promoted DaVinci Resolve use with really high bitrate 8K content. When running through PCIe 4, the playback we saw was clearly smoother than it was over the PCIe 3 bus. You're probably dying to hear about some performance at this point, so let's get to it. You can find all info relevant to the specs of the test system in the description, and if you feel so inclined, you can click any of the affiliate links to support the channel. Octane Bench 2020 was released ahead of the RTX 3080 last week, and as before, it offers the ability to test with RTX on or off. Unfortunately, the scaling between these two modes and the 2020 version is clearly not working as intended, so we're going to focus on the primary scores here. With those in hand, Octane Bench shows that the RTX 3090 is 19% faster than the RTX 3080, which is about what we hoped, or at least expected to see. Let's compare those results to a render in the real Octane render. With Octane's built-in RTX benchmark, we actually do see useful results between the RTX on and off, leading us to hope a future Octane Bench update will make the RTX off option more useful. Either way, it's been made super clear that the RTX 3090 is one crazy fast GPU. In both of our Octane Bench and Octane Render tests, the RTX 3090 has proven to be up to two times faster than the Titan RTX, which is pretty impressive considering this new card costs $1,000 less than that Titan RTX did. Over the past three years or so, Nvidia has dramatically improved the rendering performance in its stack. It was once exciting when the BMW project broke through the 60 second barrier, but today, we have these new RTX GPUs cutting through this 30 second mark. The RTX 3090 manages to land closer to 20 seconds than it does 30. Compared to the Titan RTX, the 3090 manages to cut the render time almost in half. 
Let's see how an EV render behaves. The gains for the RTX 3090 over RTX 3080 were noticeable in the BMW Cycles project, but they're a bit more pronounced in this EV one. It's important to note here that while we're brute forcing the project with a ton of samples, we verified that the performance will directly scale with normal animations using far fewer samples. Nvidia seems to dominate the EV battle in general, with AMD not appearing in the chart until its midway point. Let's return to cycles for some optics ray tracing acceleration performance. The RTX 3090 again cuts down nicely on the time against the RTX 3080 here, but it absolutely dominates against the Titan RTX that it's replacing. In one generation, we're seeing Nvidia's 24GB option drop from 49 seconds to 25 seconds when using optics, and drop more than half with the CUDA only render. It's really hard to not be blown away by this, and it makes us hope that AMD has some surprises up its sleeves for its upcoming RDNA 2 launch. On any recent generation graphics card, viewport performance with Blender's material preview mode should work pretty well, assuming the project isn't too complex and you're using a modest resolution. While we're not including the 1080p and 1440p results here, the controller model we use for our testing doesn't scale that easily at those resolutions due to what we're sure is a CPU bottleneck. At 4K, that obviously becomes less of an issue, with the 3090 gaining 10 FPS over the RTX 3080. With our first V-Ray result, we're seeing less of a gain on the RTX 3090 over the RTX 3080 than we have with the other tests, although when compared to the Titan RTX, the new top-end card really cleans house. When combined with the use of a many-core CPU, heterogeneous rendering can provide a noticeable improvement to the render time, as you can easily see. When you see nice gains using both the CPU and GPU, it may still not be your best option if you have an RTX graphics card. That's because ray tracing acceleration can be enabled to improve the render time further. Let's see how that compares to these heterogeneous results. With optics enabled, both the RTX 3080 and 3090 beat out the fastest results seen in our heterogeneous testing. Looking towards the last gen, the top-end Titan RTX rendered this project in 110 seconds, whereas the new RTX 3090 cuts that down more than half, to 52 seconds. That really is a tremendous gain from one generation to the next. The results from the standalone V-Ray benchmark, which is based on the older V-Ray 4 engine, puts the RTX 3090 in an even better light, boasting a 19% gain over the RTX 3080, similar to Octane. We're hoping that Chaos Group has a new version of this benchmark planned, since V-Ray 5 did in fact improve CUDA performance, and a way for end users to easily test their optics capabilities is always helpful, especially when you can compare your results against ours. In an example of two projects not scaling exactly the same, the advantage of the RTX 3090 over the RTX 3080 in the E-Type test was more pronounced than it was in the Sophie one. But as mentioned before, the best comparison to the RTX 3090 is the Titan RTX from last gen, which also offered 24GB of memory. Compared to that, some major generational leaps in performance can be seen. Arnold uses optics by default, and if ray tracing cores exist, they automatically get involved in the render. Unlike some of the other renderers we've tested, there is no RTX off option to toggle with Arnold. But when comparing to the older Pascal-based GTX 1080 Ti, we almost don't even need an RTX off option. The gains in performance between that GPU from three and a half years ago and the new RTX 3080, which carries the same price tag, is really incredible. Our Keyshot results follow in the same footsteps as our Arnold results, in that one project flexes the RTX 3090's brawn better than the other. With the character render, it's nice to see the RTX 3090 pull a bit ahead of the RTX 3080, and cut in half the rendering time of the Titan RTX. This set of results shows yet again just how much slower the 1080 Ti is in rendering compared to more modern GeForces. All things considered, the 1080 Ti is still a strong GPU, but if you're spending a lot of your time rendering, you really owe it to yourself to make the move to a newer card. Even last gen's smallest GeForce RTX card performed far better than that 1080 Ti. In Redshift's benchmark, the RTX 3090 again pulls ahead of the 3080 with a comfortable lead. The difference between RTX on and off is what's really notable here. Enabling RTX gives a quick and simple boost to rendering performance that will actually be noticed. The RTX 3090 didn't quite have the render time against the Titan RTX in this test like we've seen in some others, but we have a suspicion that we'll see performance improve over time as more updates roll out. Here's a look at real world performance using 3DS Max. This radio project shows a greater delta between on and off RTX performance than the Age of Vultures one. Ultimately, the obvious thing to take away from these results is that you definitely want to leave RTX on. 
You should note that this is not done by default, so you will need to go through Redshift settings to enable it. NVIDIA's GeForce RTX 3090 is an interesting card for many reasons, and it's a bit harder to summarize than the RTX 3080 was, thanks to its top-end price and niche audience targets. The RTX 3080, priced at $699, is really easy to recommend to anyone wanting a new top-end ProVis solution, because compared to the last-gen 2080 Super, 2080 Ti, or even the Titan RTX, the new card simply trounces them all. The GeForce RTX 3090, with its $1499 price tag, caters to a very different crowd. First, there are going to be those who simply want the best gaming or creator GPU possible, who have little care about its premium price. We saw throughout our performance results that the RTX 3090 does manage to take a healthy lead in many cases, but the gains over RTX 3080 are not likely as pronounced as many were hoping. The biggest selling point of the RTX 3090 is undoubtedly its massive frame buffer. For creators, having 24GB on tap likely means you will never run out during this generation, and if you manage to, we'll be really impressed. We do see more than 24GB being useful for deep learning and AI research, but even there, this is going to be plenty for the vast majority of users. Interestingly, this GeForce is capable of taking advantage of NVLink, so those wanting to plug two of them into a machine could likewise combine their VRAM, activating a single 48GB frame buffer. By now, you likely know whether or not the monstrous GeForce RTX 3090 is for you. Fortunately, if it isn't, the RTX 3080 hasn't gone anywhere, and it still proves to be a great value for its $699 price. Nvidia also has a 499 RTX 3070 en route next month, so all told, the company is going to be taking good care of its enthusiast fans with this collection of GPUs. This of course won't be the last time we'll be testing these cards. Once the RTX 3070 lands, we'll revisit the entire workstation GPU suite and see how the current stack scales across the board. Until then, thank you for watching, and please subscribe if you'd like to see more content like this.